I'm Brenda Petrella, and as you can see, we are having another amazing snowfall in Vermont today. And so I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to go out and talk about exposure compensation. I don't know about you, but exposure compensation was one of those tools on my camera that I never quite understood until recently. And snow is a great subject to use to sort of teach about exposure compensation. And so today I thought we would travel to a waterfall that's nearby called Old City Falls. It's in Stratford, Vermont. It's a local favorite, especially in the summertime. There's, it's a great swim hole. So if you're, if you're into that sort of thing, you should come check it out. And in the winter, it's a, it's a hit or miss kind of waterfall. It, it definitely freezes over when it's super cold out, but when it's a little bit more temperate, uh, the water flows and it can, it can make for some really interesting compositions, especially when we've had a recent snowfall like today. So that's the plan. The most important thing I recently learned about exposure compensation besides how to use it and when to use it is that it can only be used when you're shooting in a semi-manual mode. So this means if you're shooting in shutter priority, aperture priority, full auto mode or programmed mode, or if you're shooting in manual mode with auto ISO. If you're shooting in full manual, so absolutely everything is up to you, the photographer, to set in terms of the exposure settings, then exposure compensation isn't going to work. So we'll keep that in mind as we do our photography today. We are almost there and you can already start to see and hear some of the waterfalls that I'm talking about. This is just part of the stream right now and the waterfalls are, are up ahead and since the stream is flowing so well, I think we're gonna get some pretty cool compositions and um, that bodes well for the waterfalls being open. Here is a quick tip for photographing in snow that some people forget about and that is work for your scene from the back to the front. Uh, my goal is to get to the waterfall but there are all these beautiful little tiny waterfalls down here that I think I'd love to try to get a composition of but I'm going to start here because once I snowshoe up to the waterfall my footprints are going to be in the shot and I don't really want that and I'm the first one out here today so the snow is all nice and fresh and beautiful and so I'd like to keep it that way. Okay so as you have seen in some of my other videos where we did uh, waterfall photography in the winter, uh, you know that I like to use a polarizing filter. So I'm going to stick that on now. Um, that will reduce any kind of glare that might be on the water. The light is pretty flat right now because of the snow, so it probably isn't a huge deal. I think it's good practice to use a polarizer when you're photographing water. And my main goal here is to try to get a creamy look of the water as a contrast to the icicles that are hanging off of the rocks. I think that would make a really cool composition. It's one of the reasons why I just love doing waterfall photography in the winter. So a little tip when you're photographing while it's snowing is to use a lens hood to prevent the snowflakes from getting onto your lens. I just fell in right there, completely in. I'm soaking wet. I don't know if you can see that. Thankfully my camera didn't go in. Thankfully my phone is mostly waterproof. I think I did lose my brand new audio recorder though, which is a total bummer. I'm gonna see how cold I get getting up to the waterfall. I would love to see it. Love to take some shots up there if I can. You guys probably think that I'm a total calamity Jane and I'm beginning to think that maybe I am because <laughs> this is the second time I've fallen while doing a vlog. This one was a little more problematic though, but hopefully I only lost one piece of gear. Stick it in a bag of rice when I get home. And I am very squishy. We're gonna hike up there, see if we can see the waterfalls, take some shots, and get back into a warm car and get home and uh, get out of these wet clothes.
Okay, so unfortunately that shot didn't really turn out because, you know, I fell in and it, it just wasn't working as a good composition anyway. So I'm just going to keep going and move on and see if I can get another one. And I think there is another one up here. Um, when I was up there, I could see down a couple of little cool waterfalls um, before we get to the big one. So I'm going to see if I can safely get over to these waterfalls and see if we can get some compositions there. I can safely say that I'm glad I wore snowshoes. The snow is really deep. Okay, so I really like this composition a lot. Um, we've got some cool icicles here and the puppy puppy snow. Um, the waterfalls, it leads up, it's leading up to the big waterfalls. Um, so I like this composition enough to try it. Um, I am standing on ice, but unlike the ice on the edge over there, um, this ice is pretty thick. It's a couple of feet thick, so I think I'm gonna be okay. I'll show you the shot when I'm done with it, and I think we'll go more into composition and exposure compensation when we're up at the big falls. As you guys can see, there are lower falls down here, and then there are upper falls up there. And usually, I try to get to the other bank in order to get the angle to get the upper falls. It's really hard to do that though, um, because you have to cross over the stream and it's frozen and I already fell in. Um, I think it's probably okay. As I remember from the summer, there's some logs and rocks here that'll probably hold me just so tempting to get over to that side. Um, I did it a few weeks ago and it was pretty sketchy. So I don't think I'll do that today. Um, but I think I will try to get over as far as I can so that I can try to take this whole sweeping view. Really pretty, isn't it? I, don't, I hope you guys can hear me okay um, over the water. So we'll see, see how that all turns out. Um, oh, I'm stuck in my snowshoes. Okay, so I've got my polarizer on, my six stop ND filter, and then I thought I would just tell you what my settings are. Okay, so the whole reason we came out here today was to talk about exposure compensation and also obviously to enjoy the outdoors and that sort of thing. Snow is a really good subject to demonstrate how exposure compensation works. Um, the reason for that is because snow is white and our camera's meters measure reflected light, not ambient light. So because camera meters measure reflected light, a subject matter like snow, which is white, reflects a lot of light, which sort of fools the camera's meter. And it wants to underexpose the image to make sure that it's not uh, overexposed by mistake. Except that we want it sort of overexposed. It's kind of a bad term to use, but we want it to be a brighter image because snow is white. It's not gray. So the camera's meter is designed to try to make the exposure as close to 18% gray as possible. So 18% gray is our perceived value of light that is halfway between black and white. So our eyes sort of naturally want to see 18% gray. And that's why our camera's meters have been standardized 
to try to achieve 18% gray, which would be sort of the middle of the histogram. Exposure compensation is used to override the camera's metering system if you think that the exposure should be different than what the camera is suggesting it should be when we're shooting in a somewhat auto exposure mode. So it's only under those modes that you can take advantage of exposure compensation. If you're in full manual mode, you cannot use co exposure compensation. So in this scene here where we're shooting this waterfall, I really like to capture the motion of the water when I'm photographing waterfalls. And so I'm going to use a shutter priority mode so that I can determine exactly what shutter speed I want to use in order to capture that motion. So I can either freeze the motion with a super fast shutter speed or I can use a, sl a slower uh, shutter speed in order to get that creamier look. So if I use a longer shutter speed, I probably won't capture all these snowflakes that are falling because it's moving too fast. But and it might make the picture look a little foggy as a result, we'll see. Um, and then if I wanted to use a super fast shutter speed to get the individual snowflakes, that's what I would do. But then I would also freeze the water in doing that. So in this example, I'm just going to use a slower shutter speed. I'm gonna go with eight seconds and I have it set to shutter priority mode and ISO 100. So that means that the camera's job at this point is to try to get the correct exposure by adjusting the aperture. So in shutter priority mode, I control the shutter speed and the ISO, but the camera controls the aperture. So I am at eight seconds and ISO 100. The camera thinks in order to have the correct exposure that it needs to be at F16. The histogram is all messed up and you can't even see the picture. And there's a little function button on the front of my camera I'm gonna press right now. And that basically applies the aperture that the camera thinks it should have for the correct exposure. And you can see the histogram that it's coming up with. It's a bit to the left. And because this scene is white with snow, I'd like it to be more to the right without clipping the highlights. So to do that, I'm going to press that plus minus button and dial in my exposure compensation. So let's go up one stop and see how it looks. And now we'll press that button in the front of the camera and you can see that the histogram moved to the right a bit and is a lot brighter. And I'm at F8, F13 uh, now, which is pretty good. So I'm gonna give that a shot. Okay, there's the image. And if we hold down that little dial button, there we go, our histogram looks great. We could even probably dial in a little more exposure compensation if we wanted. That's basically how exposure compensation works, at least when you're using shutter priority. It's applied the same way with aperture priority where the camera will adjust shutter speed. Sorry, there's so much snow coming down off the trees right now. It's really cool. Um, I'm getting kind of cold, so um, I think we'll go in soon. My battery's pretty much dead anyways. And um, I left my bag on the other side of the bank just in case I fell through the ice again, which I did kind of a little bit, um, but it's fine. So as you can see, just real quick, my camera, you know, is full of snow. I'm full of snow. Um, if you haven't yet checked out my video about how to take care of your camera when shooting in cold weather or in bad weather, for instance, like snow or rain or whatever, is I've put it together just a couple of quick tips about how to protect your camera gear when going out and shooting like weather like this. So be sure to check it out. I'll um, link it below. Thanks again for joining me today. I hope you found this to be um, useful information. Check out my video on how to shoot waterfalls in winter. I go over settings a little more in a little more detail. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Follow me. Woo. Follow me over on Instagram. Um, you'll see a lot more of my Vermont photography there. And uh, stay tuned for the next video. Thanks. Mm -hmm.